Hello guys, welcome to another video. I wanted to understand a little more about computer graphics, so I started to follow Javits series Hello. where he creates a 3D graphics engine in C++ that I tried to implement in Python. Everything was going reasonably well until the middle of the third part, when he implemented a camera to be able to move around the objects. This part is a bit complex because it involves projection matrices and transformations, where the camera actually stands still at the origin and the world moves around it. At this point some problems started to appear that I couldn't understand very well, so I decided to take a break and make a simplified version first, where the camera moves around the world and without projection matrices. First of all, a brief summary of 3D graphics. 3D objects are usually represented by a cloud of points that form a mesh. With these points, faces are defined which are polygons, usually triangles, that are then filled with textures and shaded. To render an object, you need to project those points and polygons into a plane. After all, your computer screen is flat. Starting with the Python project here, for now I will import Pygame and NumPy and I will define some constants that I will use later in the calculations. The screen size and the fields of view. I have defined a fixed vertical field of view of 45 degrees and a horizontal field of view proportional to the screen ratio. Here in the main function I will initialize the Pygame and the screen, with a variable to keep the game loop running and a clock to control the movement speed and the frame rate. After that I create a surface with the same size as the screen. And now I can create the first triangle. For this I will first define a list of vertices, where each point is represented by three coordinates and two additional spaces to put the projected coordinates on the screen. Then I created a list of triangles, that will reference the previously listed vertices. This is interesting because the adjacent triangles share vertices, so I don't need to project each vertex several times. To define the camera I use three coordinates, x, y and z, where the y coordinate represents the vertical axis and two rotations, the first around the vertical axis to look to the sides and the second around the horizontal axis to look up and down, but for now it will stay fixed. After that I will fill the surface with a blue color to make it look like the sky and then check the events to close the game when clicking on the close button or pressing the S key. After that I will project the points, for this I created a specific function. For each point I will calculate the horizontal angle and the vertical angle in relation to the camera, which requires a bit of trigonometry, but it is a little easier to understand than a projection matrix. Starting from the horizontal coordinate, first I calculate the angles with the arctangent function, the vector that goes from the camera to the point. Sometimes the angle points in the wrong direction, so I do a check to correct it. Then I calculate the difference between this angle and the rotation angle of the camera. After that, check if it is inside the range of minus pi to pi. And finally, we can calculate the horizontal coordinate of the point on the screen, dividing the angle by the field of view, so that the points that will appear on the screen are in the range of minus 0.5 to 0.5, and I will multiply by the horizontal resolution of the screen and apply an offset to center the image. Now for the vertical part. I used more or less the same strategy here. I calculated an angle in relation to the horizontal plane that passes through the camera and compared it with the vertical rotation angle of the camera. To calculate the vertical coordinate it is practically the same thing as before, only with the vertical field of view and resolution, also applying an offset. Back to the main function, we can draw the triangles, passing by each one of them in the list, and to make it easier, I put the points of the triangle in a temporary list. With the draw polygon function, I enter the surface, the list of points, and the color of the triangle. Now I just need to send the surface to the screen and update it. And we have our first triangle. So we can display something a bit more interesting. But drawing an object like this, vertex by vertex and triangle by triangle, is not practical. So I added this function that interprets simpler obj files and puts all vertices in one list and all the triangles in another, and at the end transforms them into arrays. I also got some obj file that Javit made available there in his video to test it out, starting with the Utah teapot. 
very famous in the computer graphics world. I just need to call the function informing the file path. But since all triangles have the same color, the image looks like a shadow. It is impossible to have any notion of depth. For now, I will make the color proportional to the coordinates of the first point of each triangle. Here we start to see some problems. The handle which is on the back of the kettle is appearing on the front and the lid seems to go through the part in the front. The triangles are being drawn out of order. So we need to order those triangles to draw the farthest ones first and then the closer ones. First I will create a one dimensional array with the same size as the triangles array. In the new function I will go through all the triangles and calculate the array between the first point and the camera to get the distance to it. This distance I will store in the sorting array, but as I want to sort it backwards I will negate the values. Back in the main loop I will use numpy's argsort function to get the ordered indexes from the array that I will use to draw the triangles in order. It's not an ideal solution, but it solves a lot of the problems. But now let's see how the performance is. I will take the time between frames and divide by 1000 to transform it into seconds. The inverse of this value is the instantaneous frame rate. I will display this value in the window title bar with the function display set caption, rounding the value and adding a small value in the divisor so it doesn't divide by zero. I also set to display the camera array here because it will be useful later for location. The performance is not very good, but if you take a closer look, about half of the triangles that we are drawing are not visible because they are covered by other triangles. So we will use a technique widely used in the computer graphics that is backface color. Basically each triangle has a certain side to be shown. For example, in the teapot there is the inside and the outside side. So we need to identify which side of the triangle we are looking at. And this we do by calculating the normals, which are vectors perpendicular to the surface. But how do I know if a normal is pointing in or out? By convention. Here the order of the points that define a triangle are very important. And that is set when the object is created. Something similar to the right hand row. If I take the three points of the triangle and make two vectors leaving from the same point and make the cross product between those vectors, I can get the normal. If I do it in one direction, like clockwise, the normal will point to one side and if I do it in the other direction it will point to the opposite side. Back to the function of sorting triangles, first I will define two vectors with origin at the first point. Then I do the cross product between them and normalize the normal vector, dividing by its magnitude. I still have to calculate a rate going from the camera to the first point of triangle, which is also normalized to compare with the normal. This comparison is done with the dot product, which in a way measures the similarity between two vectors. Here, when the result is negative, it means that the normal is pointing in the opposite direction of the camera. But depending on the object or the order you will do those things, it can be the other way around. In the case where the result is negative, I will keep a large value in the sort array to not render this triangle. So as not to draw it, I will interrupt the drawing loop when I find the first point with the large value. The performance is still not that great. So now it's time to add a special spice, the Numba library. I will import numbers in JIT and decorate the projection function of the points in the function to order the triangles. I only needed to create a helper function to do the dot product because Numba couldn't get along with the NumPy's function. Now we have a respectable performance, up to 20 times better. Well, now I can improve the shading using the normal vector that we calculated in the back face color. First I will define a light direction vector and I will create an array to store the shadings and I will pass them both to the triangle sort function. Then I will calculate the dot product between the normal and the light direction vector. Applying an offset and dividing by 2, so that the values are between 0 and 1. In the main loop, I just need to multiply the color by the shading. 
To make things a bit more interesting, I decided to make the light direction vary a little bit with time. Passing it inside the main loop, and with the sign of time, I will change the X direction. Now for the camera movement. I created this function where I use the mouse position for the rotations, the key and E keys to change the elevation, and the WASD keys to go forward, backwards and sideways. In the main loop, at the beginning I always position the pointer in the middle of the screen, and at the end I will call the function for the movement. Now we can move around the object and see it from other angles. Sometimes it can be a little difficult to orient yourself. A strange thing happens when we look in the opposite direction of the object. Horizontal lines start to appear on the screen. This happens because the triangles are split with parts of the points in one side of the screen and part on the other. What I'm going to do here is mark those triangles that are too far off the screen not to be rendered. First I will get the positions of the points on the screen and then I will calculate the maximum and minimum values. I left an additional space of one screen on each side of the screen, so as not to eliminate triangles that are only with one point out of the screen. Now things work reasonably well. Now I can look in the opposite direction of an object and I can even pass through the object without problems. But there are a lot of things here that can still be improved. Instead of eliminating the triangles that come out of the screen, it would be better to use clipping to break them into smaller triangles that fit the shape of the screen. The projection technique I used here works well for small screen tilt angles, but for larger angles the objects start to deform a lot. So later on I want to replace this part with a proper one. I also want to add the functionality to manipulate several objects at the same time, being able to translate and rotate them independently of the camera. Another thing is textures. The function I use from Pygame can't apply textures, so I want to see if I can implement it manually. Well, that was it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you got this far and you liked it, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.